Hello everyone, this is Abhay Sharma and welcome to second part of tracking in Fusion. We'll start with single point tracking. So let's fire Fusion. Import the footage or live action plate you want to track. Make sure you have set the comp size and frame rate correctly. I'm gonna change the layout to single viewer mode and also set the global range to 54 because that's the length of my footage alright let's play it watch the footage few times and try to gauge the movement of the pattern you are interested in because that will help you to decide what should be the size of your search area I'm gonna track the Mercedes logo so let's attach a tracker node in the control panel you can see all the settings a tracker node can contain multiple tracking points by default you'll get one I'm just going to grab the tracker pattern and move it to the Mercedes logo you can see the selected pattern here and choose which channel will be used for tracking red green blue alpha or luminance currently it's set to luminance but you can override it if you are not sure then just click on this question mark you can examine your footage individual channels by pressing the R, G, B or A key in the viewer. Press again the same key to go back to the combined channel mode. Alright, I'm gonna set this to automatic. This is your flipbook area where you can see the accuracy of tracked pattern. But it won't show up until you track. Now we'll start tracking by clicking this track forward button frames per path point is set to 1 which means it's gonna track every single frame adoptive mode is set to none I'll talk about that in a later tutorial so let's start tracking alright click OK you can see that the tracker indicator is yellow which means it's not very good but it's kinda like medium quality track but if you play the flip book you can see that the the pattern is changing its shape that's why it's yellow but right now we are not concerned about the shape we just want positional data one thing that is very strange here is that when you scrub the timeline you can see that sometimes the trackers on screen controls stop updating and uh, if that happens just click on this select tracker details button and it will automatically update that Maybe it's a bug, I don't know. You can use square bracket keys to go backward and forward. Alright, let's attach an element to it. I'm gonna create a background node. Let's go to the operation and change the operation mode to match move don't worry about these settings I'll explain it later let's assign an elliptical mask to it I'm gonna turn off the motion blur and auto proxy switch and turn on high quality switch. If I play it you can see that element is sticking to the logo. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit to make it look like some sort of glowing rings around the logo. alright something like this okay so that's single point tracking here we have used the tracker node to composite the element make sure it's set to match move and merge to FG over BG if I set this to none you'll see it disappears okay let's say you do not want to use tracker node to composite your elements for some reason is there any other way yes there is I'm gonna disconnect the element and move it here 
Let's try to composite it like we generally do with merge node. Let's move this tracker out of the way. Connect it with the original footage. You can see our element is now disconnected. Okay, let's insert a transform node here. Right click on the transform center and choose connect to tracker one, tracker one offset position. You can rename your trackers by double clicking on the trackers name in trackers setting panel. I forgot to mention. Anyway, now if you play this, you can see our element is moving with track data but we need to reposition it. For that, select this tracker node, go to trackers tab, select tracker one, and in the bottom you have X offset and Y offset. I'm gonna select the tracker tool to activate the on-screen controls. You'll see a dashed red line, which indicates the offset distance from trackers pivot point. You can also use trackers offset button. You can also easily control it with an another transform tool. So I'm gonna insert a transform tool here. and reposition it. Alright, it's working fine. That's single point tracking which is useful when you just need positional data. There is one another way to do this which is very simple and quick and that is tracker modifier. Let's disconnect this element from here and let's delete this transform. Create a new transform, connect it to the element. Now right click on the center, go to transform center, modify with tracker position. Go to modifiers tab and expand track one. The main difference between tracker tool and tracker modifier is that it's limited to only one tracking point. So it's only useful for positional tracking. Okay, now you need to specify the tracker source. For that, you just select the live action plate, left click and drag and drop on the tracker source. And then select your tracking point. and track. Alright, let's merge it with the footage. Reposition the element and you're done. It also generates a tracker path which can be used to connect other elements in the scene. Alright, let's talk about tracker append. Sometimes you find yourself in a situation where the point or pattern you are interested in gets obscured by some other scene elements temporarily. In that situation you can use track append function. So let's say I am interested in tracking this tire here for some reason. Maybe I want to composite some explosion or something. But as you can see it gets obscured by this pole like thing.
for few frames. I can use track append here. So the main idea is to select a different pattern here which is closer to the original pattern. If it's on the same plate it would be great. If it is not then make sure it has minimum parallax. Okay. So let's connect a tracker node. I'll start tracking this element from frame 36 because it starts to appear from here. Let's choose a pattern. I'm gonna scale down the pattern a little bit. Let's scale down the search box also. Now if I click on track forward button it will start tracking from frame 0 which I do not want because we have set the pattern from frame 36. It should start from here. So I'll click on the track forward from current frame. Click OK. You can see that it has tracked perfectly up to frame 44. After that it got confused. So let's select a different pattern from here. Something closer. I'll select this white dot kind of thing. Select this track center append button and let's update the tracker on screen control first. Now I'm gonna move this pattern here. Let's track forward from current frame. Done. So it tracked perfectly up to frame 46 and our previous pattern reappeared in the frame. So I'm going to choose a different pattern because the original pattern is slightly cropped. Let's track forward from current frame. Okay, it's done. Track successful. If I connect any element here, it will stick with that pattern. Obviously you have to rotate this thing out. Okay, so that's track append. Let's move on to multi-point tracking. Multi-point tracking is useful when you need more data than just position like scaling and rotation. For that you need at least two tracking points. More tracking points will be better but at least two tracking points are needed for scaling and rotation extraction. So let's say that I want to track this headlight for some reason. Let's attach a tracker. I'm gonna track here. Track forward. It's green, meaning it's pretty solid. Let's create another tracking point. Choose the other corner. Track backward. Alright, it's a good track. Flipbook stops at 27. Don't know why, but it's green. Good for us, no problem. Ideally, I should have suspended this track point because it's retracking every time you hit track unnecessarily. When it's checked, it means it's enabled and ready for track. If it is unchecked, means completely disabled. No use. When you click again, it changes to a square dot, indicating suspended, means it won't retrack 
the pattern but data is available for all operations anyway let's attach something to it so I'm going to create a shape around the headlight just for fun If I play the clip, you can see it's sticking there perfectly. If you go to the control panel, you can see position, rotation and scaling is turned on by default. If I disable the scaling and rotation, let's go to the end of the footage and turn down the alpha value of the background. Now, if I toggle these controls, you can see the difference. Alright, I'm going to change the color just for fun. Now, let's say that I want to attach an element without using tracker node. So, let's create something first. Alright, let's insert a transform node here. Now right click on the center, go to transform one center, connect to. You will see three options. Bottom two options are just for positional data. If you need scaling and rotation data, you have to use tracker one options. So go into that. You'll see there is a lot of options here. Steady axis, steady position, unsteady position. Basically, you can divide these things into two categories. First is tracker points average data. And the second is tracker points specific data. I'll talk about these things in the next tutorial. Right now, we are just interested in what's important. And these options are context sensitive. So if I click on the center, you will get, let's say, steady position. If you click on the size, you will get steady size. And if you click on the angle, you will get steady angle. So we'll connect the center to unsteady position. Now if I scrub the timeline, you can see that it's moving with tracked data. Let's reposition these circles to somewhere appropriate. Okay, now if you go to the end, you can see that the size and rotation is off. We have to connect the size and rotation to trackers data as well. So I'll connect the size to unsteady size. But it's dislocated due to wrong pivot point. We have to change this to where trackers pivot point is. Right now it's set to default, which means average of tracking points. Let's connect the angle to unsteady angle as well. All right, it's done. Corner positioning. We use corner positioning usually for sign replacements or screen replacements, something which has four corners. In this shot, I can try to replace this signboard, but it goes out of the screen, which makes it very difficult. I can try track a pen, but it's very time consuming. I'll select something that's visible throughout the shot, like this front plate. For these kind of replacements, there are other softwares like Mocha, which makes this planner tracking kind of stuff real easy. Even if the corners goes out of the screen, you can check it out. It's pretty cool. Let's connect the tracker node.
you can manually add tracking points or go to the operation and click on corner positioning it will automatically add three more trackers so let's adjust it All right, let's track. Make sure your trackers are active. Done. I'll check all the trackers and it's all green. So perfect. Let's replace it with something. I'm going to save my comp. Okay, it's replaced. Stabilization. I'll use the previous setup. I'll delete everything except tracker because I don't want to track again. Select the tracker, go to operation, match move and change the merge type to BG. And boom, your footage got stabilized. Because we are using two tracking points, we can have rotation and scaling information as well. You can see how it's affecting. To fix the edges, you can use wrap, duplicate, mirror, whatever you like, or just use another transform tool and scale it up to hide the edges. Let's dug a little bit deeper. <clears throat> Open match move settings. Reference is set to start, which means it's using the start frame as a reference for stabilization. You can set this to use end frame as a reference point. Or my favorite one is start and end button which will interpolate between start and end frame and you will get a smooth panning. Let's set this to black. Reference intermediate point acts as a tolerance value between smooth move or original camera movement. So you can introduce a little bit of original camera move while discarding high frequency vibration in the movement. It looks like nothing happens. Well, let's compare it. Let me show you a different example where jittery movement is really apparent. So let's stabilize this flower. 
let's see where I can put the tracking point I'm going to turn off the enlargement scale. Track perfectly. All right, you got the idea. Okay, so this is it for this part in the next part I will explain the remaining features which I haven't Explained here if you like this tutorial, then please subscribe like comment or share to show your support Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye